Woo! What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here, and I'm, uh, super hyped for this battle, Crash Bandicoot vs. Spyro. I've been anticipating it for the past three weeks, I got the episode pulled up right here. Um, if you've seen my prediction videos, you know that I think Spyro is definitely going to win, even though I'm rooting for Crash because I just like him more, but I like both a lot. I know lots about both of these characters, so this is going to be very interesting to watch, um, Death Battle's take on it, to see what they include, what they leave out, if they'll... Uh, composite crash stuff like the manga and all that. I think they showed the manga in the preview. I can't remember. Um, but anyways, let's get started and not waste any time because you've already heard my thoughts in the previews and my prediction video. Um, let's go. Three, two, one, play. <clears throat> Screw attack. Man, haven't watched one of these death battles in a while. Kind of quiet. So, hopefully I don't talk too quiet, because I'm hearing it quiet. Nintendo and Sega's mascots were left in a merciless duel over the gaming throne. But when the smoke cleared, a surprise... It wasn't really a duel, it was more like a one-sided Mario stomping. And it didn't have just one mascot, it had two. Crash Bandicoot, the mutated marsupial from Down Under. And Spyro the Dragon, the powerful purple... By the way, I'm super excited for the Spyro trilogy. What convenient timing. Not like there were leaks around by the time this was announced or anything. Oh yeah, I did see the fight, uh, a preview of the fight animation. Um, during the death battle cast. It was really good. I kind of wish they didn't show the preview so I could be surprised when sparks get squished. Um, but yeah, we're gonna watch the full thing now, because this is the full episode. So, I can't wait to see what the rest of the animation is like. I'm sorry if I'm talking a bit too much during this preview for your taste, but I have seen the Crash and Spyro previews, so I have seen part of their analysis, so... Part of this is not new to me. Maybe I won't react to the previews next time. I don't know, it depends on the combatants. If I know the combatants very well, I might react to the preview. Um, I might not. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see who the next fighters are. Instead... I'm guessing, I'm guessing they're finally gonna do Thanos versus Darkseid because Infinity War is coming this month, right? I don't know. I don't pay attention to the Avengers or superhero movies. Not really my thing. Anyways, I'll try and be more quiet now. I'm sorry. I just have lots to say about this fight. Actually, I'm surprised I'm talking this much. I usually don't talk a lot. I'm usually a very quiet person. Just shows how much I love Crash and Spyro. This battle's got me hyped. <clears throat> but we're about catching up to the stuff where the Crash preview ended, so we're about to get to some new stuff. Oh, what's that say? It may also contain nuts. <laughs> okay. Sorry, there's a little thing, well, I mean, you can see it, but a little note appeared on the top, and I'm visually impaired, so I have to, like, lean in to read it. My eyes. Oh yeah, I'm gonna correct some <laughs> incorrect information. Like, Crash doesn't get dizzy when he spins too much. The fully upgraded spin attack allows him to spin infinitely without getting dizzy. That's only if you haven't upgraded the spin attack, where he gets dizzy. <clears throat> Alright, now the new stuff. Here we go. Yeah. I'm surprised they are including stuff like the copter and the cycle, because he doesn't really carry them everywhere. They're just kind of there. Same with that thing. Uh, I mean, this completely generic looking mech. But why fruit? I can't imagine it's a particularly effective projection. <laughs> I wonder if they'll give him Aku Aku. Oh yeah, I saw him in the battle. Well, I don't know if he'll count in the analysis or not. He might get killed. He might just get killed forever like Sparks did. But if they include Aku Aku, then Crash should be able to get his mutants, because Aku Aku can pocket those and save those up. So Crash can use the mutants in battle. He can't, he can pull him out of nowhere, unlike the gear and stuff. <laughs> just called Crash Autistic. 
Why? Oh yeah, they're including Aku Aku, but they're called Crash Autist! <laughs> Aku Aku's magical mojo is quite impressive. Very protective of Crash. I shouldn't laugh at that. But not always. Wiz, why can he teleport across dimensions on his own, but can't teleport Crash very far at all? This is as far as I can take us. We'll have to fight our way to the robot's interior and save your sister. <laughs> yeah. Well, perhaps his fatherly intuition is kicking in, encouraging Crash to learn from his own mistakes and become <clears throat> his own man or bandicoot. Yeah, maybe he's just Mandicoot. Well, thanks to Aku Aku and his own amazing abilities, Crash has performed some incredible feats while stopping Cortex's plans time and time again. Yeah. He's strong enough to lift his adopted brother Crunch over his head. Since Crunch is at least twice as big as Crash, that would mean Crash's strength is similar to the world's best power lifters. His cyclone attack can generate enough <clears throat> force to lift this large boulder and yep. throw it so hard it shatters on impact. Comparing its size to Crash, that boulder must weigh nearly eight tons. He's nice. Fast enough to outrun polar bears. Oh, they are including the manga. Sweet. Miles per hour. But Crash really shines when it comes to durability. Just look at how well he holds up after taking <laughs> 112 falling wooden crates to the face. <laughs> huh. Where did they all come from? I bet it's Aku Aku's fault. And he's right back up like it didn't even happen. <laughs> what a champ. Crash has endured an explosion. Oh, yay, one of my favorite crash feats. <laughs> once, which, given their size, could potentially level a city block. Yeah! We did that calc- well, mainly, uh, some other people did. I'm sorry, I can't remember who did. But we calc that. And it came out to about city block. Similar to the space shuttle's typical re-entry. So it seems we were correct. Woohoo! equivalent to more than 2 million tons of TNT. Woo, nice. Why didn't Aku Aku just teleport them to safety? I can't believe we're okay. Oh, are you kidding me? Billy, Aku? it's me, the Grim Reaper. Greg Eagles, yeah. the saying? Any crash you can walk away from, right? Plus, given how easy it is for Crash's enemies to lure him into traps, his absurd durability <laughs> Yeah, 100 ton Crash hammer. isn't perfect, but with his amazing abilities and a little bit of mojo, he's saved the whole world many times over. Yeah. And after years of this, I'm guessing they're not including the mutants. That's weird. They're including the gear, but not the mutants. Oh, please no. <laughs> I mean, Titans is an okay game, just not an okay crash game. All right, time for Spyro. Honestly, I don't have much to say about Spyro. The most experience I have with him is the original trilogy on the PlayStation. Um, I have seen a bit of the Legends games through my own research and such, um, but I haven't actually played through them myself. And I haven't gone near Skylanders. So yeah, I definitely have more experience with Crash, but I still do like Spyro very, very, very much. Ugh, Spyro keeps looking worse and worse with age. Poor guy. Theories aside, Spyro eh, itchy was ear. from Malfor's <clears throat> wrath by Ignitus, eh. a guardian dragon. He decided to pull a Moses and send Spyro's egg floating down a river to who knows where. <laughs> okay, why do so many stories start with people just throwing babies into rivers? That's <laughs> never a good idea. Wrong so they can become the prince of Egypt. Spyro. He was found and adopted by a family of dragonflies. And even without fellow dragons around, and fulfill Spyro God's prophecy and Ten Commandments He's strong, and all that. Tough. Uh, of his horns, tail, yeah, yeah. That's why wins, babies and rivers. Without a dragon's parentage, Spyro remained mostly grounded during his childhood. But yep. he got pretty good at using his head. Like the fun way, not, not the brainy. I'm way. probably the only Spyro fan who likes the treetops level. <laughs> if you've ever played Spyro, you know treetops is a nightmare for a lot of people. But I actually really like it. I just like the supercharged mechanic. I like flying across the level with the supercharge and all that. Oh, my favorite part of the preview. That he was <laughs> Hold up. You mean he thought that face. I'm never going to get tired of that face. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know. Any time he saw his reflection. This revelation prompted Spyro to go on a journey in search of his true home among other dragons. Oh, the music's so good. Sparks tagged along to help find treasure and protect his dragon brother from harm. 
Uh, I'm surprised they're including Aku Aku in the analysis if they killed Sparks early in the animation they showed on the Death Battle cast. I don't know, maybe Sparks will come back somehow <laughs> in the middle of the fight, we'll see. Ignitus taught Spyro how to control fire and focus it into huge blasts. Voltaire showed him how to use electric... <laughs> oh yeah, this is the new stuff, by the way. Mention the bubble breath. Bubble breath! Bubble breath! And Parador showed him how to use earth breath to split rocks and roll up into a ball! Yeah! Bubble breath! No, they forgot bubble breath! From Enter the Dragonfly! <laughs> Sorry, I can't say that title without gagging. Time powers. All of this led to Spyro learning the ultimate element, the convexity breath. Ether. Convexity. It's ether. <laughs> so stupid, everyone calls it convexity. <laughs> oh, okay. Purple oh, what's that say? Spyro can use a mysterious energy that is essentially the okay. spiritual there we go. force of the universe. <laughs> While it's <laughs> never officially <laughs> named in canon, lead concept artist Jared Poland has gone on record to clarify its name and properties. And he calls it ether. Eat that boomstick. <laughs> Don't convex me, Wiz. Fans know I'm right. They went over, they went over that much trouble just to find out what the thing was called. Wow. With Ether, Spyro pulls from the four elements to create energy, which, according to Poland, has power comparable to that of an atom smasher. Isn't that mm -hmm. the thing that shoots an atom around at light speed for all sorts of sciencey stuff? Yep. Yes, there are particle accelerators with a moving photon beam containing 362 megajoules of energy. Yeah, I said that. Uh, this beam can slice through a human skull in a nanosecond. Just like what happened to Russian scientist Anatoly Bugorsky when he stuck his head in one of them. <laughs> why the hell would he do that? Yeah, why? Being Russian must be hard. Bugorsky took a beam less than a molecule thick through the skull, which obliterated all matter in its path in an instant. While he survived, half of his face around the microscopic hole in his head swelled, peeled apart, and was permanently paralyzed. Jeez. The the blinding light he described as brighter than a thousand suns. Hey, Spyro, what was that about? I don't really know. I just felt like I ain't doing that. Oh, what's that say? Okay. And when I did, uh, spare gems and crystals in the house to made of Okay, that's not important. <laughs> just random info. Yeah, Dark Spyro. You don't need to. There he is. What it's like when he killed the ape king. Of course, Spyro's ether powers have other uses as well, such as curing his fellow dragon cinder of Malfor's corruption. Is he shooting ghosts at her? What kind of magic <laughs> were they smoking when they came up with that? But ether is dependent on a balance between light and dark. Yep. Should a purple dragon fall prey to their own anger and hatred, they risk being consumed by dark ether or nether, transforming into a blackened, rage-filled form. Spyro's a really nice guy. But Rawr. Dark Spyro, he lets loose. He yeah, Dark Spyro. Dark Spyro doesn't play. <laughs> Unfortunately, when Spyro's consumed by Dark Ether, he cannot return to his old self on his own. But with friends like Sparks and Cinder at his side, he's always found mm -hmm. his way back. Through the power of love. Right, <laughs> you gotta believe. <laughs> The Parappa reference. Uh, reference. The Parappa reference. Okay. He's pretty quick, outracing biplanes that can fly. I can't talk today. Miles per hour. He's pushed a gold statue about twice his size, and he's pretty tough, claiming his scales are impenetrable. So I'm electricity proof too? I knew my scales <laughs> were impenetrable, but now this? A bold claim, but let's look at the facts. Spyro once took a punch from this massive man. Bam! Metal which then lost its arm and replaced it with a cathedral tower. This cathedral is very similar in size to St. Stephen's Basilica, a Roman Catholic well then. pest hungry. By taking the height, length, and depth of the basilica and adjusting for empty space, we can estimate the arm's mass to weigh over 400,000 tons. Assuming a low-end punching speed of 15 miles per hour, that of the average human, Oof. the golem must have hit with at least 1.9 million tons of force. Just barely below Crash's feet at 2 million. Oh, yep, there's the feet, the planet feet. Mm-hmm. I'd say a mix of the power it was calced to about moon level, I believe, to move all those pieces back into place. Because, I mean, he wasn't exactly destroying the planet or creating a planet, so it wouldn't really be planet level. He's just pulling it back together. Just look away. 
All right, here we go, finally. Let's end this debate once I can't wait to see the rest of the animation. Let me tell you about the mascot of good food. Blue Apron. Ah, Blue Apron. Here we go. Four boxes in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Woohoo! Splat! <laughs> Weird. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> He's body slamming. <laughs> Smack! I was waiting for that. Sparks, no! That's never gonna get old. <clears throat> Woo! Sick move. <laughs> Jess Harnell noises. There he is. And there he goes. Let's see if he comes back into play. Because, I mean, if they really are including Aku Aku in the analysis, hopefully we'll see some of the mutants too. I already explained that thing. He can summon them. He can pocket them magically and summon them. So hopefully we get to see some mutants here, even though they didn't talk about the mutants in the analysis. I don't know why. And they gave him his gear. Somehow. <laughs> <clears throat> pew pew Fruit Womp of fruit Wait a sec, was that a fruit? <laughs> no, it was a vegetable. <laughs> Careful, Crash. You're gonna fall in that wind waker looking water. And smack. No! I got Lion King flashbacks there. Scar, help me! There's the flyer. That's what I'm asking! He could just summon them with Aku Aku, the mutants, but no, he just finds gear out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, boot to the face. And there he is. Alright. It's, it should be over now. <laughs> hey, I kind of like the cell shading there. That looks really good. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Aqua is saving you from that. <laughs> oh, vaporized. Hmm. Nobody messes with me. Slightly anticlimactic, but still cool. There he goes. I expected that to happen. Spyro had plenty of Spyro wins. His speedy flight let him control the pace of the battle, and his elemental arsenal gave him a much wider variety of attacks than Crash had ever seen in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Even with his extraordinary puzzles. I'm surprised they didn't mention the lightning dodging. They both have like massively hypersonic speed feats from dodging lightning and stuff. In fact, I'd say Crash was faster because I mean Spyro's dodged lightning, but Crash has dodged people who have dodged lightning. <laughs> 
almost like they planned this all along. <laughs> to be fair, we did have to lowball Spyro's durability against the Golem's punch. However, both of them had shown durability, which far exceeded yep. much of their attack capability. So even with his gadgets, Crash really didn't have a good way to hurt Spyro very much. <laughs> but the funny thing is, Spyro didn't have many attacks that could firmly hurt Crash either. They were both just too tough. Well, until Spyro used the Ether Breath, which <clears throat> could literally break matter apart at an atomic level. Not even Aku Aku could save Crash. Yep, Crash is about town level at most, and Spyro is about moon level at most, <laughs> or planet level, whatever. Um. So yeah, it is a bit of a stomp. I mean, they're both around the same speed, but Spyro does kind of stomp in strength. But anyways, that was still a cool episode. Some little incorrect information here and there, but they got the verdict right. So, next time. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I know someone who's not gonna be happy with that. Oh, Percy, dude. I mean, I'm hyped. Oh. Anyways, I'll make a prediction video on that, obviously. <laughs> oh, because I know both those characters well, too. Oh man, this is gonna be insane. <laughs> hmm. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my reaction. Uh, I probably will react to the previews of the next two fighters because this battle is gonna be insane. <clears throat> I'm hyped. Um, but anyways, whoa, shaking the whole thing. <laughs> anyways, here we go. Or, there we go. Leopold the Brave out. Oh, that ruined the outro. Go away.